All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to finally start doing something. We're going to make a ball class and actually uh, update some stuff. But I want to fix this paint component thing because this is not the way we want it to be. So I'm going to delete the uh, draw oval part. And I'm actually going to copy this uh, draw rectangle thing into the draw method. So um, it'll actually just be part of the image. So under draw, we do want not G2. The, our main graphical artist, G, which is drawing to the image, we do want it to, uh, to write uh, white background every time. Or you can choose that to be some other color, but this is drawing the background of the image, of our main game image. Um, and then, so what we're going to do now is actually create a ball and have it kind of bounce around the uh, game. So. Um, new class ball. Um, and so we need to have a constructor public ball. And the constructor doesn't actually need to do much at this point. We'll flesh it out in just a sec. But so when you think about a ball, what does it need to know? It needs to know its position in space and it needs to know how fast it's traveling and in what direction. So you might think that you need to have like this complicated vector to calculate from this direction. You don't need to vector like direction is actually very easy to handle. We just handle it uh, one variable at a time. So well, let's start here. So we have a private int for the x position, the y position, and we also have the uh, direction, the x direction, and the y direction. So the direction on the x-axis, like how fast it should move. Uh, side to side and how fast it should move up and down and that's it and we just make very basic changes to those things and it can actually handle pretty complicated um, uh, movement. So we are also going to have a private int called ball size which is just going to give us a basic starting size and I just set it to 30 arbitrarily. So initially, all we're going to do is set these values to static things. Eventually, they're going to be able to be changed and all sorts of stuff. But we're just going to set the starting position of x to 200. Y would just arbitrarily, so you can see something. We're going to set it to 200. And then the direction in the, the x direction, we'll just set it to 1. And dy equals 3. Uh, and those are arbitrary, but those are going to be updated. Like the, dx is how fast the x position is how by how much the x position is updated every cycle through the game loop. So it goes from 200 to 201 to 202 to 203 to 204, and it does that like 60 times a second. So that's going to actually produce some movement. Okay, so that's the constructor method. And now each of these things are a game entities of which the ball is one, need to do our main things. They need to be able to update themselves, and they need to be able to uh, draw themselves. So we're going to do those, public uh, void update. Uh, and public void draw and our draw method needs the tool from our main class so it needs a graphics 2d object to be able to do its job and so when we uh, call this over in the main class we're actually going to use the G object from over here we're going to send it to the ball and say hey get instructions from the ball and draw whatever the ball needs to be drawn onto the image Okay, so we're going to send it over there. We'll do that in a little bit here. Um, in addition, in update, we're going to have a method called set position, which is just going to be responsible for setting the ball's position in space. Okay, under uh, we'll need to create that so it stops being angry at me. Public void set position, and then in a minute I'm going to tell I'm going to do some stuff in there. Let's just fill out the draw method first. So. This is arbitrary, g.setColor. You can make your ball look however you want. I'm just going to color.darkgray. So every time the ball, the G tool heads over to the ball and asks it, what should I draw, the ball is going to say, hey, draw, set, reach for the dark gray ink, and then I want you to, to, uh, to draw, oh, yeah, I want to set a basic stroke. Set stroke. Oops, not, okay. G.setStroke. Can't spell. 
G dot set stroke and just a new basic stroke which is just an object that can control uh, how um, thick the line is basically and then I wanted to draw G dot uh, draw oval um, from and I want the oval to be at X Y that's the top left corner of my oval and I want it to be a uh, circle so I'm going to call ball I use ball size and ball size that's width and height of my oval so our draw method is now complete and now we need to um, do some stuff for the set position method. So the set position method is called an update every time through the game loop it's called. So what the set position method is going to do is just ask if the X and Y, if the ball has hit the wall, basically, and then it's going to increment the position by DX and DY. So it's going to change the position just slightly. So X plus equals DX. That just means add the value of DX to whatever the current value of X is. Y plus equals dy. But then we want to check to see, like, oh yeah, have the has the ball hit the wall? So if x, can you guess, is less than 0, right, because 0 defines our left edge, we want to change the velocity. We want to flip the direction in the x direction. So dx equals negative dx. If y is less than 0, we want to flip the value of dy equals negative dy. But we also want to hit the tell if it's hitting the right wall and the bottom wall. So if uh, x is greater than bb main dot width minus ball size, minus the size of the ball, we also want to flip dx send it bouncing in the other direction and if y is greater than bb main dot height minus ball size we want to change the direction in the, the change the y direction and so now our ball will bounce around because it's going to update its position every time through the loop every time through the loop it's going to do all this stuff and uh, if we're doing, I think this might be a complete class at this moment. So we're going to head over to game panel and make some basic changes there. So in our fields, we're going to add the entities. And we're going to make a new ball. The ball equals new ball. Uh, we'll initialize down below because that's a better pattern. So we're going to declare it up top. And then in initialize, we're going to initialize it. The ball equals new ball. Under update, we need to update the ball. And how do we do that? We just say the ball dot, you guessed it, update. It knows how to update itself. So we just ask it to, because we already defined that method. So we already have told the ball how to update. And now all we need to do here is just say, hey, update the ball. And under draw, same thing. The ball knows how to draw itself. So under draw, we just say the ball dot draw. And G is the main graphical tool, right? So we just send G over to the ball and say, hey, G, can you please draw the ball? Um, oh, I wanted to set rendering hints for this, um, for the ball, so for the, for G. So let's just do that quick. Um, just a second as I bring up. I always forget the exact uh, enum that you need to use for rendering hints. Okay, so we're just going to do G dot set rendering hint. Uh, hint key, this is just an enum and it's rendering hints dot key anti-aliasing and this just means like get rid of the pixelation and then this is another enum rendering hints dot value anti-alias on so we want to turn on anti-aliasing alright let's see did I get it all right I don't know it's iffy <laughs> no something oh hey
Oh, it's going too fast. Yeah, I forgot to put the wait timer in here. Okay, so in the game loop right here, it just goes so fast you can't even see it. So we need to wait at the end of the repainting. And we do that by just uh, asking our thread to just sleep. And sleep just means pause. So we do try and uh, so that we don't get an error. Uh, thread dot, we'll just do an arbitra a fairly arbitrary value. Sleep for just 10 milliseconds. Just like slow down a little bit. And then we need to catch if that, if it for some reason isn't able to do that, uh, then we need to catch the exception. And this is a com this is a common practice. Uh, e dot print stack trace, uh, which just means it'll print the error message without actually crashing our program. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> is it going to be better? Yes, better. Okay. Cool, we've got, oops, but it didn't bounce when it got up to the top. Let's figure that out. So, x plus equals dx if x is less than zero, dx equals negative dx. Oh, this one. Oh, what was I doing here? Oh, this is y is less than zero, y equals negative dy. x is greater than bb main. Okay, I think it'll work. Let's see. Bounce, and it's going to bounce again. Yes. Okay, so we got some basic motion going. I'll continue it in the next tutorial.